three, two, one. What's going on, folks? Welcome to 34 Questions. I'm your host, 34. And tonight, I have a very special guest, another cousin from the Philippines. Lelaine is in the building. How are you doing, Lelaine? I'm doing well. Hello, everyone. I hope you're doing well. <laughs> I'm sorry, can we repeat that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I get so awkward. <laughs> oh, no, no, you're fine. You're fine. Um, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's totally it's totally fine. Don't worry about it. Um, thank you for, for stopping by and uh, joining the show. Definitely appreciate your time and openness to, to share your story. Uh, for the folks out there who are unfamiliar with the flow of the show, we do some intro questions, some warm-up questions just to set the tone. Um, and then... After that, we'll jump into the main interview where you choose a number between 1 and 34. Sound good, good to you, Lelaine? Great. For, for sure. My very first question for you is, how have you been? It's been a pretty crazy year, year and a half. I uh, can't imagine what it's like out there in the Philippines. Um, so how you been doing? Doing well? Doing great? As of the moment, I'm doing really well because it's my vacation. I'm, re- I'm currently on a break. That's why I'm taking this time to really rest because college is stressful, <laughs> especially when I take it online because I had this transition from high school to college and everything is online and everything is just new. The system is new. The teachers are, the teachers are new to how it works. And yeah, there's kind of a lot of adjustment in the past year, but I'm grateful for the time that I have right now. And I'm happy that I'm able to rest right now. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, so you talked about how challenging it was to to start doing online classes. Uh, any positives, like anything you liked about the experience um, that was different from doing it, you know, in person? Um, for instance, I don't have to travel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just at home. And then whenever there's a class, I can be like still on my bed and then... If it's only just two minutes left, I'm gonna stand up palang. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't have to be like so worried to be uh, to like wake up early and then prepare at least an hour before class and like yeah. I mm. guess the preparation in itself. Sometimes I I don't even like I just woke up and then I attend class when it's really too early for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I wish I was able to do that kind of. I like you know it's funny in. People, people have said they wished it, and then you know, as soon as it happened, it's like, dang, I, I, I miss going, going to school. So it's you know, the two sides of it sometimes. Um, <laughs> moving on, uh, we're gonna move to the icebreaker. Uh, would you, you have a choice? You could do the one word spelling bee, or you can do a riddle. Which one would you like to do? The spelling bee. <laughs> the spelling bee. All right. I stopped at riddles. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. No worries. <laughs> Um, so, uh, how, how do you feel about your spelling skills, especially, you know, with English words? <laughs> I feel like I'm doing great. Uh, wait, a little fun fact. I, I actually won, like, two spelling bees, but it's, like, like really easy, and I'm really nangangapa at that time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just based it on how it sounds, so. <laughs> I gotcha. That's, that's the way to do it. Um, so, your word is going to be Presbyterian. <laughs> like, like I don't the... know the word. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I'll give you another one. I'll give you another one. Okay, okay. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, handkerchief. Handkerchief. H A N D K E R C H I E F. Nice. You you got it. <laughs> um, people sometimes miss the the D or the K in there, but you got it. Um, <laughs> thank you for participating. <laughs> And then uh, moving on to the warm-up questions. My first warm-up question for you is, what would you like the audience to know about you? Okay, hi. Let me introduce myself as if I'm like on a different setup. Hi, I'm Lilene and I'm currently a college student palang, but I'm really trying my best to make the most out of it. And if I am to be remembered, I want you to remember me as a person who does everything beyond extraordinary. So yeah, I'm not really the best at everything, but like I give my best at everything. And I think that's great. (laughs) For sure, for sure. Um, how how much further? I mean, how much longer do you have in college? Uh, I just finished freshman year, so I have like three years pa. If I'm not delayed, mm-hmm. <laughs> if I do well, 
Um, <laughs> yeah, are you gonna just are you going for a master's afterwards, or you still haven't figured it out? You just want to like focus on the first four years. <laughs> Yeah, I still haven't figured it out. I just want to take things slow, especially right now. <laughs> I got you. Um, what are you pursuing, or do you do you know yet, or are you still taking your time on that as well? Uh, my course right now is BS Agribusiness Management and Entrepreneurship. Basically, it's like a hybrid of everything agriculture and business management. And yeah, it's really like a diverse field. Like one time you're studying about plants or animals or insects, and then the next thing you're studying about economics and then mathematics, and then it's really a lot. But I, I like it. I actually enjoy it. <laughs> what uh, what inspired you to to get pursue that field? Actually, when um when I was entering college, it was like the pandemic, right? And then during that time of the pandemic, schools were actually really hesitant about how the system is going to continue. And so the results of the college entrance exams were delayed and all of that. Uh, when I passed like the premier university of the Philippines in yeah, in our country, my parents immediately focused like, oh, you're gonna enter UP because first there's free tuition, second there's quality education, and then the third it's it's the premier university of the country. Like everyone would want to like, if not everyone, well most <laughs> really like vice for that that slot. And then I was first waitlisted in computer science, but then uh, when I was thinking about it, I'm like. No, I don't really see myself in computer science. Uh, it's a good thing that I got waitlisted because um, when the slots are filled up, we are given the chance to actually choose another course that would um, really match your interest. And from there, and from the scores that I got during the exam, I chose communication arts. But then uh, during the span, the span of the pandemic, I was really thinking like, I like communication arts. I like the thing, I like journalism and all that stuff, but I don't really see myself majoring in that. Perhaps I like it more as an interest, but not like as a major. And so um, I had the chance to uh, like reapply or apply for a reconsideration in UP pa din, pero in a different place, the place that's nearer the Near the nearer here in Laguna, which is UP Los Banos, and from the courses that were available, I really feel like I wanted to pursue something in the business side because I just really feel like businesses are really uh, it's it's never ending. It's it's going to continue, and I like the the fact the fact that you're always strategizing, always thinking, and yeah, that's that's like the story of how. <laughs> Okay. I chose agribusiness management. <laughs> I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Um, are you planning to like start your own business or probably or just be a part of a team for another established business? Where do you see yourself going with it? When I graduated college, I feel like I wanted to start a business with the kind of business I, I'm still not sure, but I feel like I wanted to start my own business. <laughs> For sure, for sure. Yeah, definitely uh, take those classes. <laughs> That's <laughs> I, I haven't taken any like entrepreneurship or business classes, but you know I, I tried doing it the hard way by by just trying. And you you learn a lot. You go through a lot more mistakes. I think if uh, you know you don't get that information while you're in school. So take it step yeah, by but step. I, I also think that experience is the best teacher. <laughs> And oh. I think it's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, it is because there's no like there's no safety net. Um, if you're gonna learn by experience, you're basically uh, you're, <laughs> you're failing as you're going, and you have to learn as you're going. And if you take a long time, then yeah, it's gonna uh, it's gonna add <laughs> on. So yeah, I I, I wish you best in, in your journey. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. No uh, my second question for you in the warm-up is if someone were to pay you a tribute how would you like to be honored so if, if I was gonna tell myself today I'm gonna do something in the honor of Lelaine what what act could I do in your in your honor uh, I guess show someone how much you appreciate them because uh, a little backstory when we were in 10th grade we have a retreat and in this retreat we have an activity where in your group with your classmates and then uh, each one of you would 
give words of affirmation to each person in the group. And everything was really nice. We really spent like a lot of hours just talking about how great our group mates are. And then one of my uh, classmates said that if she receives that kind of affirmation in the daily, she would be happier every day. And I really that really struck me. And I feel like if oh nga, if if we really just showed affirmation or how much we appreciate a person, then it it would be very nice. I gotcha. Yeah. Um why why do you why don't you think people give those affirmations more often or, you know, people bring it up? I feel like sometimes uh, people have different love languages then like sometimes their kind of appreciation they show it in a way by doing services or by giving gifts yeah I think there is that <laughs> gotcha gotcha well, what would you say is uh, your love, love languages I feel like it's acts of service <laughs> like I do this for people really for sure for sure I gotcha um and my third question for you is on a scale from one to ten how well do you know yourself um i think seven like i re- i really know what i'm capable of but sometimes i still think there's a lot to discover about me especially when i was like <laughs> when i was like choosing a college course I, I really haven't like i really don't have like a solid plan like I, i don't have a solid course that i want i just know what i don't want i don't want medicine i don't want those that are really heavy with science or the ones with tourism and all that i just knew the kind of person that i wanted to be so yeah i give it a seven because even though i know where i wanted to be I think there's a lot of things that I still need to discover when it comes to my strengths and weaknesses then. So, yeah. For sure. Uh, what would you say is your favorite thing about your personality? I feel like I always give everything that I do 100%. Like, <laughs> I really try my best in everything that I do. And sometimes it's draining because sometimes... Being a person who's, what do you call this, like uh, a master of none, yeah, <laughs> jack yeah. of all trades, yeah. yeah, jack of all trades, master of none, yeah, being that kind of person, um, you have so much things that you wanted to do, but, and that's nice because you have a lot of like, uh, a lot of fields that you can tackle really, but although it's draining, I like that I'm that kind of person. <laughs> For sure, for sure. I think I'm pretty much the same kind of person, um, and and yeah, it, it's it's good and it can be a great thing and a challenging thing as well, right? Because there's a lot of people out there to tell you you should just focus on one thing and you know that's that's all you should be doing to to get the most out of your experience. But you know, being a jack of all trades, like like you said, I don't know if it's the same for you, but. I think I get bored easily with with one thing, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I have to always keep trying new things and just being like, all right, well, you know, why why can't I? Well, why can't I do something different? Um, so yeah, I got you. Now, do you think um, that's always been a part of you, like since you were a kid, like growing up, or was it something that you had to kind of grow into that outlook and perspective? I feel like it has been a part of me since I was a kid because I really didn't like when it comes to school pa lang, I really didn't have like the solid uh, subject that I like or when it comes to my interest I didn't have like when when I was a kid I was swimming and then our, our parents enrolled us into badminton and sometimes we jog and I just enjoyed like physical activity in general but not like a very specific like I, I only like swimming it's not like that it's really everything's really general <laughs> Yeah, I got you. I got you. And yeah, and it helps. It helps keeping keep things broad, so you have the choice for yourself to to be who you want to be. Um, all right. Well, we'll move on to the the main portion of the interview, where you start choosing numbers between one and thirty four. Uh, there are three levels: an easy, medium, and hard. Which level would you like to start? Let's start with the easy one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, yeah. What would be your first number? Um, 30 because it's my birthday. <laughs> 30. I gotcha. Uh, what is your big idea? 
you know how people always talk about this is what what, what I would want to do so if you were going to start a business do you have any idea what you would kind of get into what, what kind of service you want to provide or, or bring good what is your big idea oh, okay so as of the moment I'm really um, discovering the world of freelancing especially the field of social media marketing that really enjoys me a lot like how people markets different uh, different products or services online and I like the fact that social media is ever changing and so there's really something new that you have to keep up and I feel like if I'm going to have like a business I feel like I'm going to delve into offering social media marketing services for different businesses so yeah I, f- I feel like that's where I wanted to be and you know what I, I have like an interview the, the other day and then it was for an agency and I, I, I got really happy because she asked me uh, I, I thought you were so experienced now with uh, freelancing and social media marketing and sabi ko, uh, no I'm really just uh, starting pa lang, ganyan. Tapos, she was asking me, you know what, I, I really see a lot of potential. And do you plan soon to start up your own agency? And that possible, and with that question, that, that, like, sparked an idea of me na, oh, it's possible pala, and I can do it pala. And then, she asked me na, oh, okay, I can, I can teach you naman, or you can learn naman here in the agency. So, yeah, I really think, that's nice and i really enjoy marketing in general for sure for sure <clears throat> so it sounds like you were able to just uh, leave an impression that uh <laughs> that you was already in are, are you already working with social media marketing or i'm i'm starting i'm starting what, what does it mean to to be a social media marketer um, basically, you, on, on easy words, you handle the social media accounts of people who have big businesses. For example, um, a person sells makeup products and then from that you would plan the content, you would plan how they are going to uh, launch their campaigns, you would plan how you are going to engage with their audiences and all of those stuff. I got you. Uh, I might need to ask you for some help, to be honest, because so, social media oh, sure, marketing sure. is not is not my thing at all. <laughs> um, so yeah, if uh, I don't know if you have to do if you have to analyze it or anything, but you could check my page. You you could let oh, me sure, sure. Let, let me know what I'm doing <laughs> wrong or what I can improve on. <laughs> uh, but that's cool. That's cool. Uh, wow, social media marketing. Uh, what would you say is the greatest strength and weakness of social media? Um, the greatest strength of social media is that people can easily like access information into it. Like, for example, you are trying to sell like a makeup product or even a food something. Through social media, people would have like their first impression again on that kind of product whether they would resonate with it or not and it, it can be a strength but it, it can also be a weakness because once you post something that that is not really like appealing to them it could leave a bad impression and i feel like that's uh that's what social mar- social media marketers comes in it's like really trying to uh please please people in a sense <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, what do you think there's going to be another like step forward in social media? Because, you know, uh, I think the newest thing has been TikTok, right? Uh, yeah. Do you think there's going to be another iteration? Or, or yeah. I mean, I, I guess we can't stop it. There's always going to be a new thing. Um, what would you like to see different in, in this next, next, next platform? I guess, with the, I guess with the boom of TikTok, different um, social media platforms are actually trying to keep up with videos especially uh, short videos that are actually interesting like for example uh, Instagram they w- I'm, with the launching of reels they are trying people to be more engaged with videos to say like copy sort of wh- how TikTok does it so with social media everything's really adapting everything's really changing and yeah every platform really tries to keep up with what uh, makes people interested in so yeah I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Uh, go ahead and uh, throw me another number. Uh, seventeen. Seventeen. Uh, still easy. Yeah, yeah. 
sure. Uh, what is something in your life that you've taken control of? Okay. I've taken control of... At this moment, I try my best to... Uh, hop onto my fitness journey again. Because uh, since I attended college for the past year, I, I really became stressed. And <laughs> there really is a time that uh, I, I'm just... I feel like I'm not productive, but I'm actually doing a lot of things. And with starting my fitness journey again, like trying to eat right and uh, exposing myself to exercise, I feel like I'm having the control of not just uh, what my body feels, but also how I like schedule my day and all that stuff. And I think that's really nice. I gotcha. Uh, what would you say has been... I what comes easy to you on, on a fitness journey? Because sometimes, you know, people struggle with it. Is there anything that, that you feel like, you, you know, you were just able to pick up easily, whether that be, you know, cooking the right food or eating the right food or sticking to your daily routine of exercise? Which one, which, which has been the easiest for you? Actually, there are days that it's not easy, but there are days that it's actually like, oh, yes, I can do this. But I feel like every day I just have to remind myself to take, one day at a time like just do your exercise for this time or just plan your meals like for this time and don't get overwhelmed with the next days because i I feel like sometimes that that's where it gets tough like oh i have to eat like (laughs) this amount for the rest of my life (laughs) i just think (laughs) yeah by taking one day at a time i feel like i'm getting consistent at it for sure, for sure. I know it can be overwhelming when you start thinking about the next day or like your whole life, uh, and it, it isn't as enjoyable, you know. Um, yeah. But if you take it day by day, then maybe tomorrow you'll you'll splurge a little bit, and there's not a lot of yeah. pr- as much pressure, you know. Um, I had a, I had another question, but it, it, it uh, <laughs> left me. I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead and throw me another number. Uh, one. One. Uh, oh, I did remember, but what is uh, your sn- healthy snack? You know, if you're going to snack on something, what was what, what, your go-to snack? Oh, okay. My favorite as of the moment, oh, my aunt discovered this. Um, wheat bread, and then we toast it, and then we put, we put cream cheese, and then we put sliced strawberries on top. It's really good. <laughs> it nice. really puts me in a good mood. <laughs> because it's sweet and it tastes like pastry. And yeah, I feel like it's it's great without even having a cheat meal. So yeah, it's really nice. <laughs> I like it a lot. That sounds awesome. I got I to gotta try the cream cheese with uh, strawberries and all meat bread. Yeah. You, you guys roll it? <laughs> or is it like a sandwich? No, we, all, we toast the bread. So it's like... <laughs> yeah, to- toast is even better. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, number one. Still easy or? We're gonna go for medium. <laughs> awesome, medium. Um, you kind of answered this earlier, uh, but go ahead and feel free to answer it again. What impression do you want people to have of you? Oh, okay. So my answer earlier, and still my answer, <laughs> is um. I go beyond extraordinary, like whatever I do, I may not be the best person for that, but I always assure that I give my 100% to everything that I do. If not 100, even 101% to whatever I do. Yeah. Has there ever been, ever been a time you felt like you didn't give 100%? Yes, because with um, giving yourself or with the idea that I go beyond extraordinary, sometimes I tend to think or I tend to set unrealistic expectations and unrealistic goals to myself. And sometimes there's that's where the pressure comes from, but I really have to remind myself, especially in stressful times, that it's okay that <laughs> I'm doing my best and that's fine. So, yeah. Uh, well, when was the time you would say you gave, like, your most? You know, you said 100%. When's, when's the time you gave 200%? Uh, yeah, do you have a time like that in your life? Okay, when I was in grade 12, I, I had a lot, as in a lot of um, <laughs> extracurricular activities. For instance, I was the student council president and then I'm the leader of 
an organization, social, uh, Salishan Youth Movement in the group, and, and the school. And apart from that, I'm also class president. I'm the editor in chief of the school paper. I'm also like a student representative in the the provincial educating community. It's it's really a lot. And with the many roles that I'm handling when I was in grade 12, uh, I feel like whatever I do, I really do it at my best and I really give it my everything <laughs> which is so stressful talaga it's really stressful and going back I, I feel like I'm happy with how things went but if I'm going to change something I think it's delegating more tasks and being more clear and with the goals that I want and the expectations that I set for myself and that way I still give my best but at the same time I still give myself some rest <laughs> for sure um well how would you say you you keep that balance for yourself of like you know you, you give your 200 percent to to everyone at a time and then how do you give 200 percent to yourself actually with the pandemic that's when i realized that it's okay to not be the best always. <laughs> it's okay to be second best sometimes. And that's when I try to develop, like, to give more attention to myself. With that, yeah, I'm, I'm trying my best to set realistic expectations for myself because when I disappoint myself, I'm really sad. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's what I do. I set myself realistic expectations at times. And I would always remind myself that if I don't, achieve my goals it's okay what what's important is that i i did my best and i would take it like as a learning opportunity or like i would look things in a more positive light for sure and uh what you we were talking about the first impression uh, or the impression pe- you want people to have of you what do you think they see like if if uh you know i were to ask your friends how would you describe elaine what uh what three words would you think they would say <laughs> when uh when i asked my friends when i was in grade 12 they would say that i'm pretty stressed <laughs> <laughs> I got you. aside from that they would also say that um i have a lot of things to do <laughs> Like I and apart from that is that I'm really organized because I like organizing the things that I do. So yeah, when I do things, I feel like I am putting everything in kind of a process. So yeah, for sure. Well, uh, you know, I hope you can find ways to relax sometimes. Um, I don't want you to be too stressed out. Uh, but yeah, it- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna uh, throw you a curveball right now, which is which means I have a question that I can choose for you. Um, okay, sure. It is a fill in the blank uh, question, and my question for you is: Life is all about blank. This one's hard, but okay. Um. <laughs> Life, I guess, is all about discovering your purpose and implementing it. Uh, would you do you know your purpose now, or are you still trying to figure that out? I'm still trying to figure things out. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Uh, how, how would you say people find their purpose? Because I. It took me a long time, and I don't think it was until maybe last year during during uh, lockdown. Yeah, how do you think people find their purpose? I feel like uh, first people need to like reassess themselves and find their ikigai. When uh, ikigai is like a Japanese concept wherein everyone, uh, each person's talents, interests, where they can get money from, and that those stuffs interlap and that's where their purpose comes it's really like a, a big idea but yeah i feel like it's with the ikigai yeah, that, that's a uh thank you for introducing that concept to me because you know as far as everything for, uh in, in my pursuit i feel like i got that one last part of trying to monetize from it um but you know so it's, it's weird because like with, with this podcast people have asked me about monetizing and how are you going to make money off it and I'm kind of scared to start making money off it because I don't want it to, to lose its purity or you know the reason why I'm doing things 
um, how how do you think I can change that mindset as far as like you know um, I would like to make money but then I don't because I don't want it to affect the way I feel about it any advice for me <laughs> actually I feel like a lot of people have been going through with it especially when I, I started to learn freelancing people would start to like um, tell others to focus on their skills what they can do as of the moment but then a lot of people they have this dilemma of they have this this specific skill for example a graphic design they have the skill of designing graphics but at the same time they don't want to monetize it because it would feel like work <laughs> and your passion feeling like work sometimes cannot be like sometimes when it's too much cannot be like a good combo so yeah i feel like with that part um you just you just have to as much as possible remain uh, maintain the connections in each video and i'm really enjoying <laughs> i'm really enjoying so far so yeah for sure for sure yeah i i haven't figured it out as well um and yeah i i guess it's one of those things where i have to make that decision when i when i get to it because i don't think I, I, i'm there yet but uh yeah, yeah I'll, I'll keep that in mind i'll keep that in mind um let's move on back into the to the numbers what, what is your next number uh 18 18 medium right sticking with me yeah medium. medium all right uh what is something you wish you could unlearn you know there's for, for some people it could be you know a fact about their culture that they're like oh man i wish i had never known that because now you know i see it differently is there anything you wish you could unlearn i wish i could unlearn um <laughs> the fact that i'm too perfectionist <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I hope I'm more easy to go. I feel like sometimes I wish I'm more risky. <laughs> I'm more of a risk taker. I mean, I I do so I do have some risk when it comes to like my freelance business and all that. But I feel like yeah, me being self-conscious about my image or maybe my image in the sense of my achievements. I wish I could unlearn that. Hmm, I got gotcha. you. Uh, now, how, how do you think, like, being aware of that, how do you feel like that would, that changes your, your approach to life, you know, to be less uh, or to be more of a risk taker? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like just, by, just what I've said before, it all starts with changing my mindset that even though I have goals and expectations, it's okay that sometimes I don't. Uh, I don't achieve it in my time frame but understand that everything falls into place in their own time and that what's important is that I did my best and I would take every opportunity and see it as an opportunity for growth like what is this teaching me so yeah it's really it really is a change of mindset for sure for sure um, go ahead and throw me another number <laughs> uh, 20 what, what is a stance you had on an issue And you changed your mind about it So if, if you had any particular uh, view On a topic that you kind of realized Was either um, not wrong But you know that you got more information about it And you're like okay maybe I can see it differently Is there any kind of uh, stance like that in, in the world for you? Um, <laughs> this one's challenging, but okay, let me try. I feel like none so far. <laughs> for sure, for sure. So yeah. you feel like you're, you're, you're pretty strong in, in your in your perspectives and values, right? Yeah, if, if anything, it, it, it goes deeper, but not really like a big change. Especially mm. like when I entered college and... Like I've said, I'm studying in University of the Philippines, and it's a public university in the country. And then uh, with college, there are a lot of different people, especially in UP, there are a lot of different people advocating for different things. And with their advocacies, I kind of 
realized different social issues that are really happening and which I believed in before but it it goes deeper <laughs> I like understood it in a more um, societal level and how it really affects people so yeah I got gotcha. you what, what would you say is if you were gonna say the world needs to focus on one issue the first issue we need to tackle what would you say is that if we as of the moment it's the pandemic <laughs> but if we aren't in a pandemic i feel like it's the environmental issues that we have mm. currently because yeah there are a lot of advocacies and their advocacies are really great but if we're, we're all going to end up really soon <laughs> I feel like we should really focus on saving the planet, uh, changing into a more environmentally uh, sustainable practices. So yeah. About the environment, like, I, it's hard not to feel so defeated, you know, because <laughs> they, they tell us all the time <laughs> that like it's it's too late, we're done. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. Things are are just way too far gone. Um, so how do you how do you feel like we can make an impact, like? Because for, for me, at least in America, I don't think, like we say we recycle, but there's been things coming up about it that, you know, it's not really recycling. You know? And for, for us out here, it's just like, okay, then why why am I doing this if, if the people who are supposed to take care of it aren't taking care of it? Um, what would you say is the best way to impact positively with, uh, with the environment? Actually, I kind of agree because in the Philippines too, <laughs> there there is a lot of like um, practices that are like really not, um, yeah. But I feel like it starts with educating the young because it's not, it's not like we are going to make asa <laughs> to the younger generation. But when their minds are changed, I, I really feel like it's going to be easier. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Uh, what do you think out of all the environmental climate stuff that we need to deal with uh, is a, is one of the things that you feel more, most passionate about? Um, I feel like lessening the amount of plastic bottles used. <laughs> mm. Because I feel like uh, that's the most easy way for most people to adapt to like bringing a tumbler and just asking for a refill so yeah yeah i mean the water bottle thing i uh yeah i mean you know we still use it over here and i wish there was some way we can kind of change that um uh, i don't know why it's so big like it, uh, well, i know why it's big it's like convenient it's cheap and all that stuff but actually yeah yeah, yeah. um and when i went to the u.s people that we have interacted with really <laughs> really is like depending on water bottles it's like when you're going to go out oh you bring a water bottle <laughs> but you just have like three in your bag so <laughs> I, I, I get that <laughs> yeah i get that it's convenient but i feel like there is a more sustainable practice to it so yeah for sure for sure oh yeah how, how was your trip out here um, what was uh, the biggest part that you got out of it? How long were you out here for? Like a couple of weeks? Or? I think it's 16 days, 16 to 18 days. Okay. <laughs> yeah, how's, how's your experience? You were in New York, right? Yeah, it, it was my first time out of the country and it's so cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very cold out here. <laughs> Yeah, and then, and I really enjoyed a lot of things because when we went there, we landed at JFK and then we stayed. I forgot, but but so we were near New York and then for some days, I think like two to three days, we were like roaming around and I. It's nice because I I try to I I get to see a lot of different culture. I, I get to see a lot of different people. And then after after New York, we immediately went to Yale. And then oh, there are a lot of right minds, especially especially with the committee. And everyone's really good at speaking. Everyone's really good at delivering their stance. And yeah, I really. I really enjoyed the time at the same time I really enjoyed learning from a lot of people of different 
countries. So, yeah, I treasure it up to this day. <laughs> For sure. Um, did did it kind of live up to your expectations, or yeah, did come you know visiting <laughs> feel like it was what you expected? Yeah, yeah, actually, I, yeah, with with the country, uh, with the place, and uh, the culture, I feel like that's what I've expected. But I didn't expect that cold, <laughs> that amount of cold weather, or maybe I'm not so sanai because in the Philippines it's really humid, it's really hot, <laughs> and then when we go there, it's really cold. I, I like I like the cold, but it's like. Too cold. I, I, yeah, <laughs> it took me days to like really adjust and be like outside and comfortable. <laughs> I got you. Um, was there anything about America that you didn't like besides the cold and, uh, rec- <laughs> and our recycling practices or, or bottle practices? I feel like that's it. <laughs> that's it. Okay. Yeah. For sure. Uh, where where would you like to go next if uh, if you were to come back? Uh, I wanted to visit Harvard because when we were in Yale, people people were like, <laughs> "Oh, uh, just a, uh, like a two-hour bus ride or something," and then you're already near Harvard and all of those stuff. And I was really curious about how it looks like, and uh, yeah, <laughs> I kind of want to visit that place because Yale's really beautiful and Yale's really big and. When when I was there, I was like, wow, <laughs> everything's really great for me. Everything's really, especially because I was like 16 years old back then. I was really young back then, and to explore that kind of like place, it really, I really felt like I'm blessed with the opportunity. So yeah, for sure. Did the, the did the people at Yale talk bad about people at Harvard? Because like you know, they're I think they're rivals, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I, I don't know, but I haven't encountered one really. <laughs> okay, okay, that's good. That's good. Maybe the, they're too intellectual to, to even, <laughs> even try to start anything between each other. Like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, go ahead and uh, throw me another number. Still medium? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. 22. 22. What do you think of cancel culture? Oh, cancel culture. Um, I feel like cancel culture <laughs> prohibits a person to change. Because cancel culture often happens to people who are influencers, per se. People who have a big following. And with cancel culture, it really takes a huge part of like allowing a person to grow. I mean, yeah, yeah, some people have like access to internet and they could educate themselves on some issues. But with the fact that the first thing people thinks of when an influencer commits a mistake is to cancel them, I feel like it's not really a great thing. Yeah, yeah. Is is there anyone that you liked before they got canceled uh yeah is there any anybody that you looked up to or maybe admired before they got canceled uh honestly not really i I don't really have someone that i admire so much and then they got canceled but in the philippines when people cancel someone they sometimes uh comments really get rude and yeah that's where i kind of like oh no (laughs) i feel like people should give uh influencers or whatever people calls people with big following some chance because after all they're still humans and they also commit mistakes and for instance we should allow people to grow yeah i think uh, you you bring a very big point right there like that's something i hadn't realized for myself that uh, it really does prohibit people to change. Like, yes, I know I was wrong. Yes, I know that that what I did in the past, you know, wasn't the best thing. But now I'm trying to do something better. But I'm still being judged by my mistakes that I made in the past, which is really tough, right? It's like yeah. you, you don't want to dismiss it, but you also don't want to like focus on on the past, right? You want to. And that's interesting. So I'll, I'll keep that in mind next time somebody brings it up in conversation. Because I think it is true. Um, 
just a heads up we have about 10 15 minutes left in the podcast uh wanted to thank you again for for stopping by i, I hope you're having fun because i know i am yes i'm having fun really <laughs> i'm really enjoying for sure i'm, I'm, ha- I'm happy to hear um <laughs> go ahead and uh, throw me another number uh nine still medium hard now <laughs> all right all right these do get hard uh what do you feel like you've taken for granted? Oh, okay. When I was um, in high school again, <laughs> because I have a lot of responsibilities, and with those responsibilities, I have a lot of goals, I have a lot of expectations, I feel like I forgotten the time that I have with my friends. I mean, I I do spend time with them, but I feel like when I have lesser responsibilities, there would be more time. So if I were to go back, I feel like I would really lessen my responsibilities in order to enjoy the time that I have with them. So yeah. For sure. What what was the like thing that you guys would do? You know, if you're gonna spend time with your friends, what was like that activity that you you guys enjoyed doing together? Really just going out to the malls and then eating and then probably sharing, yeah, sharing stories or sometimes even watch a movie. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, it's, it sounds like, you know, part of it could be like the quality time. Right? When we were talking yeah. about love languages, that might be a secondary one for you. Uh, for sure. Any, any friends you want to shout out or there's just too many that you don't want to like? Yeah, there's just too many. Baka some may, I know, may get offended if I <laughs> if I forgot them. <laughs> oh, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. That's why it's it's hard for me to ask people to to shout out others because you know you never want to miss someone, and then they're gonna feel <laughs> feel bad about it, and you'll feel bad about it because you didn't mean to miss them. Uh, <laughs> but I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Uh, got another curveball for you. And okay. this is a this is a shout out question, and I don't think it's too crazy. Um, but who you ever had a favorite teacher, coach, or mentor? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have one in mind. Uh, if you don't want to say the name, you don't have to. But if tell me about you know why why what kind of impact they made in your life. Oh, okay, so. My favorite teacher back when I was in high school again was my English teacher when I was in 10th grade simply because he is so passionate in what he's doing and he really realized lessons to the best of his ability and you really understand how he delivers the lessons and he makes it interesting. Aside from that, he really like gets to he really makes the effort to get to know his students like on a personal level because I, I think when it comes to college that's where the part that really is like not evident but when it's high school it's really easy to like communicate to the teachers in a more casual way and with that uh I feel like I had a lot of growth because of him because when it when it comes to like conversing with him, it doesn't necessarily mean we have to talk about English. Sometimes we have to talk about uh, my responsibilities and how I could like balance it more. So yeah, it really went beyond um, academics. So yeah, that's why I really, really am a fan of him. <laughs> yeah. For sure, for sure. Um, uh, what would you say is you know the mark of a of a good teacher you know like you know i'm sure he was the one that stood out but out of all your teachers that you felt like you had a good connection with or you know you you felt was most impactful what was that common theme through through all of them i feel like the fact that he's really concerned with students like not just based on ac- because some teachers are concerned with their students based on their academic performance <laughs> And although I get why, sometimes you just have to understand that not everyone's strength is academics. And so why not be concerned with them as a person per se? So yeah, that's what I really like about uh, him and some of my teachers then. That they're really uh, concerned about the the person or the student as a whole. So yeah. Mm, I gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah, I mean... 
I always I'm always curious about how teachers approach their job, and um, I think caring about the the person's well being should come first, right? Uh, but it's hard sometimes when. I guess I think the challenge for teachers I don't know if it is in the Philippines but I know here in America uh, for high school teachers it's like you have to meet the expectations of of your bosses or the people who hire you um, and then because that's how you get money or for the school and how you get paid you're meeting expectations of parents because there's that there's that um, factor into it and then you have to meet the expectations of your students so yeah I don't know if it's the same for the, for the Philippines but I know I hear if a teacher's doing all that then sometimes they can lose lose sight in you know looking at the well-being of a student first um, but yeah yeah, I really feel like teachers have it hard. <laughs> I mean, they have a lot of things to do, but I feel like uh, the technique of some teachers is that they allow themselves, uh, they allow students to be open to them. Like, for example, students have rants or students have something that they don't like about their school. Even if they are a teacher, they really like try their best to listen from their perspective and from that uh, act upon it. It's like, it, it's like questioning themselves. Are the like concerns of my students valid in any way? or is there something that I can do for them or I can do for the school so yeah I think that's that's a great thing when students really feel like teachers are listening to them I feel like it's a great opportunity for relationships to be built and to be better yeah actually uh, you made me think about something as far as like teach if a teacher listens to a student like really listens to them that's like one of the first times a, a student can feel like they're being heard by an adult right it's a uh, it's, it's, it's that dynamic and relationship but uh yeah like that, that's <laughs> that just blew my mind as far as thinking <laughs> thinking in it, think of it thinking of it in that way where you know for all the teachers out there I hope you're making your students feel heard because you're probably one of the first adults that they're going to feel like is listening to them um, cuz you know parents they try to listen but they're still parents and they, they feel like they should tell you what to do sometimes um because they're looking out in the best interest for you so yeah playing that teacher role being able to be open to students feedback or just like we say you know getting to know them as a person i think is huge in uh in their confidence and how they feel about yeah. you know talking about what's important to them uh, especially to older folks yeah, yeah. Especially when, in my case, since I have a lot of responsibilities, I, I sometimes I, I wish things were done in a certain way. And with teachers that are like him or teachers that are open-minded, I get to have the chance to like express what I can in a way that doesn't offend anyone. <laughs> like I, I had the opportunity to explain myself before even, you know, making things a little bit harder for me so yeah I, I really feel it's a nice thing for teachers to be open for sure for sure um well we made it to the concluding portion of 34 questions but before we go to the closeout questions um i want to do this new thing it's called the 34th mantra i didn't get to do this with with your ate so this is a <laughs> you, you got your first chance doing it or oh, i didn't get to do it with your dad as either um but you know what mantras are yeah yeah okay uh so i have a phrase that i want you to fill in the blanks the first phrase is i am blank okay well, should, I, should I say it yeah, now? Yeah. Oh, there's three of them? <laughs> but yeah, you, you go ahead and do them. Um, but I am blank. I am Lillian. <laughs> I am Lillian. I can blank. <laughs> That's hard, but okay. I can be my best. <laughs> and the last one is I will. I will strive to make life more meaningful than it is right now. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, 
if you ever need a reminder now you have yourself you have that sound bite of yourself telling you who you are what you can do and what we, we what you will do <laughs> um, oh, thank you thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> no problem no problem I, I think it's it's a cool little thing that uh you know if if because i feel like there's stuff i need to be reminded of of myself and um yeah it's, it's just i think it's a it's a fun little thing to have you know for the future um moving on to the closeout questions this next question is from my previous guest um shout out shout out to cj thank you for your for your question and his question (laughs) his question for you is what do you what do you view the afterlife like if you do believe in the afterlife how do you envision it okay since i am a christian i believe that afterlife it's either heaven or hell and <laughs> and with heaven i feel like everything's comfort everything's great everything's nice everything's white <laughs> yeah i feel like everything's happiness by then i hope so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh do you think it's like you know we're, we're walking on clouds or is it kind of like earth where you know it's like a solid thing because every time i think about heaven i'm thinking about you know the pearly gates with with and yeah. we are walking on clouds and, and all that and it's like the sky and everything is just like white everything is, i feel i still feel like it is it is that way for sure for sure um you think it's like you know with uh with the harps and the I, don't, I forgot what that one instrument is with the strings but uh yeah like, oh, okay yeah yeah i mean that would be kind of crazy if it, if it if that was it you know uh we go up there because then we'll, we'll be kind of like living in the past because everything's kind of like more old school but i guess that's what makes it simple and that, that's what makes it you know i guess very easy going um i think we'd still be working though like in heaven if that was the case they would they would make all the, <laughs> make all the angels be in charge of a person i guess you know that's why we have yeah. guardian, guardian angels right uh but yeah <laughs> very interesting uh, cool uh and what would you like to ask the next guest that comes on to 34 questions you could go heavy or light it's up to you oh okay what's your favorite oh uh, yeah what what song feels like home to you yeah, you know the song where you feel like uh, it's so homey or it's like rest. So yeah, what song feels like home to you? Gotcha. Well, what what song is that for you? For me, it's by a Filipino band. It's called Leaves by Ben and Ben. It's really mellow. It's really soft. And yeah, I feel like that song really is homey for me. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, you said it was Leaves from Ben and Ben? Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll check that one out. Um, oh, yeah, sure. And then my final answer for you, I mean, my final question for you, the question that ties everything together. 500 years from now, our descendants are watching this video. What would you like to tell them? I hope you find time for yourself always. <laughs> mm, for sure. Yeah. Oh, why, why is that important? Because um, growing up, we are always told to do great things, be everything, do this, do that, and like be more of others than yourself. But when I grew up, I feel like everything starts with yourself. And when you develop yourself, everything else would follow. So yeah, start with yourself. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Uh, any last things you'd like to add before we head out of here? Um, not really, but like, thank you so much. I really enjoyed the time that we've spent together. <laughs> it's no, really cool, though. For sure, for sure. Um, you know, I would, like I said to Layla that, you know, I, I feel bad that we're not just because we 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 live in different countries and we don't have enough time to to bond and get to know each other you know that's that's something you know when we i asked you the question was something we i've taken for granted from for me that's what it is is that you know i haven't been connected with you guys as well as much as i would like or should have um but i'm very appreciative that you you know you made the time to come on here and for me to do 
be able to get to know you better um i think it's important for me and i definitely appreciate the opportunity so thank you again for for coming by anytime anytime <laughs> uh, i want to thank all the folks out there as well if you're checking this out on spotify podcast or apple podcast or youtube appreciate your time as well thank you um if you liked it go like it if you loved it please subscribe and share remember to reach out reach forward as always much love and we'll catch you guys next time on 34 questions peace and then it fades out from there um but yeah that, that, that was, that was it. <laughs> i'm glad you, you were able to make